guys, what's up? Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play claw. Now this video is extremely in-depth and this is by far the best how-to claw video on YouTube. This is a seven part video that talks about the following topics. What is claw and why claw? Then we're going to be going over how to hold the controller and the transitional period between how you're playing now and switching to claw. Next I'll be covering which fingers press what buttons and brief gameplay examples such as jump shotgunning, building and editing. And lastly, but definitely most important, is injuries and things to look out for. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions in the gaming community, so I've done a little bit of research, and from my personal experience of playing Claw for eight years, I'll be covering these topics. And I never say this at the start of a video, but if you guys could drop a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And at any time throughout the video, if you feel like I deserve it, create a code YouTube underscore flea. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into it. What is claw? So basically claw is when you bring your index fingers up off the triggers and onto the D-pad and action buttons. It's called claw because as you can see, my index finger is shaped as a claw. So now why claw? The main reason people switch to claw is to be able to move the right analog stick while pressing jump, reload, and pull out builds. And on the left side, edit, inventory, and take the L. The whole point of claw is not taking your thumb off that right analog stick. What this will do is hardwire muscle memory patterns in your brain and make your aim become deadly. Everyone always asks me how I have such good shotgun aim and this is always because I don't take my thumb off the right analog stick from the minute I get on Fortnite to the minute I get off. You may have noticed when I start my stream, I jump and move around my right analog stick. This is me warming up my aim and reactivating those muscle memory patterns. Also at the start of my stream, I'll jump and do flick shots while farming trees for the same reason. This gets my aim ready for a fight. Now I know people use certain keybinds like R3 to jump, L3 to edit or whatever, but there are plenty of pro players that have made non-claw controller bind videos, so be sure to check them out. But as far as I remember, this title isn't how to not play claw. This is probably the most important part of claw, yet extremely overlooked. Most people think you can just pick up a controller like you always do, then chuck your fingers up and you're done. This right here is a very uncomfortable position for my index fingers. In fact, it almost hurts. As you can see, I can barely press all the buttons. This brings up a big misconception that people think their fingers are too small to play claw. There's no such thing as fingers being too small to play claw. Watch this, ready? If I hold the control like this and try and press the buttons, I'm straining my finger trying to press those buttons. But if I rotate my wrist just slightly, all of a sudden, I can press everything with ease. In fact, if my index finger was cut in half, so I had midget fingers, I'd still be able to press every single button. The slight wrist rotation is key. Now this right here is something huge. Because I've rotated my wrist, if my thumb rotates with it, there would be an analog stick down here facing outwards. But there isn't, so I have to reposition my thumb back up on the analog stick, and this is going to make my aim seem off because I'm no longer pulling and pushing in the same direction anymore. Before I was pulling and pushing like this. Now I've changed the angle, I'm now pulling and pushing like this. But it doesn't take long for your brain to relearn that muscle memory. It's not like you're picking up a controller for the first time. You're just taking those movements you've learned and recalibrating them into a different direction. I call this the transitional period. The definition of transitional period is a time in which things are changing from one state to another. In this instance, we're changing from standard grip to claw grip. And I'd say this lasts about a week. Considering we got playground and creative, there's no reason why you can't practice this for a few hours a day. Whether that be target practice in playground or 1v1ing your mates in creative, all practice pays off and all hours add up. The most important thing is, don't think you have to go from playing standard grip to claw instantly. This transitional period is all about slowly learning claw over the next week. This means in a public match, play claw when you're looting, running around and farming, but when you get into a fight, if you feel like you're gonna choke, go back to how you used to play, finish the fight, and then return to claw. But in creative and playground, religiously play claw, pressing necessary buttons you will need, so when you go back into the game, you don't choke. There's nothing worse than learning a new keybind or button bind. But we all know after a week, you pretty much have it down pat. That's the same with claw. Just be patient. Patience is absolute key when learning anything new. And next. Which fingers press what buttons? This is something I get asked a lot. Hey Flea, which finger presses R1? Or what buttons does your index finger press? And this is where I go a little more in depth. 
For me personally, my thumb stays on the analog stick, my index finger presses X, square, circle, triangle and R1, and my middle finger presses R2. 99% of the time. 1% of the time is in rare cases in which I need to do specific tasks which involve me to have my index finger on the action buttons while pressing R1, such as jumping and placing a flat. Remember, the whole point of learning claw is keeping your thumb on the analog stick. So I could just jump and place flats like this, but I can't move in the direction I want to consistently. I have to keep taking my thumb off the analog stick. Now, I don't want to confuse you with finger swapping because it took me a while to learn it and I'm still practicing certain things, but I'll put them all in an advanced claw tips video for all you claw sweats that want to get sweatier. Here on screen, I have a few pro players who all play claw completely different. Here's Chronic Lewis. As you can see, he uses his index finger for the action buttons, but he uses his middle finger for R1 and R2, whereas I use my index finger for R1 and middle finger for R2. I know a lot of players that do this, but I also know a lot of players that use their index finger for R1. So just find what works for you. Next we have Chronic Tendi, but he actually brings his ring finger up onto R2 and moves all his fingers down one. So that means his middle finger now presses R1 and his index finger presses all the shape buttons. So no fingers are rotating. He's got one finger on everything that he needs. This is a very advanced claw method and I don't recommend starting off with this. I also find it really hard to hold the controller with just your pinky, considering every other finger is busy. So you'd have to have your hands sitting on your lap to do this method, so I don't recommend it. One thing I noticed with Tendi is that his right hand isn't hugging the controller. It's actually coming out a bit, which gives his index finger a more natural motion and makes the buttons a lot easier and pain-free to press. Unlike Faze Swan, he has his hand hugging the controller and his index finger crunched up when pressing the buttons. There's no right or wrong way to hold the controller, it's just what works for you. In my personal experience, the more crunched up your finger is, the more pain your knuckle's gonna be in. So the more natural motion you can get pressing the buttons, the less pain you're gonna be in and the better it is gonna be for claw. Swan also keeps his index finger on the action buttons and lets his middle finger do R1 and R2, just like Chronic Lewis. <laughs> A good friend of mine, Chronic Trapped, does exactly what I do. So his index finger is on the action buttons, but also swaps up to R1 when he needs. When I bring my index finger down to the action buttons, it looks like this. Whereas Trapped has a bit more of a wrist rotation, once again it all comes down to what you're comfortable with and what works for you. As long as your thumb stays on the analog stick and your index finger on the action buttons, you can do whatever you want. Now we're going to be talking about pain and injuries, but first here are some gameplay examples. <laughs> Okay, now probably the most opinionated topic is pain and injuries. Now I did a little bit of research and this is what I found. Most articles mainly talk about carpal tunnel syndrome, which for those of you that don't know, it's a swelling of the tendons in your arm caused by repetitive use of your fingers and wrists. 
I searched up and not once did it mention the word claw. It was mainly just talking about gaming as a whole, so PC and console. As far as what I read, and I have to agree, it's not what you're doing, but how long you're doing it for. Yes, of course, gaming for 8 hours straight playing claw is going to come with some health risks. Hell, even I remember when I was grinding wins in Season 3 for over 8 hours a day, my knuckle would flare up and be in a little bit of pain. But I don't play that much anymore, so I've got zero issues, and so have many other claw players that I know. And I'm always stretching my wrist, forearms, and fingers to make sure they're not tightening and that I have full mobility. And as far as arthritis goes, there is zero evidence saying that playing claw causes it. In fact, no one really knows if excessive finger use even causes arthritis. I mean, it's recommended no more than two hours of repetitive finger activity without a break or stretch anyway. I mean, if this and this and this and this is going to cause arthritis, then our whole generation is going to have fucking arthritis. We're all going to be 50 years old walking around with fucking scary movie two hand. Here! Oh! Take my hand! Ah! Come on! You're gonna fall unless you take my hand! But I'd rather not live my life avoiding everything that may potentially hurt me and just be smart about what I do and keep it in healthy moderation. So that hopefully concludes this long-awaited video. And if you made it this far, drop a heart emoji in the comments and I'll favorite them all. If you got a question, type it afterwards. I'll be replying to all comments. And if you thought I missed something, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped a few of you out. I know it was in high demand, so I'm glad I could get it out there. Once again, if you guys could drop a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Creator code YouTube underscore Flea. You guys are fucking legends. Thank you all so much for the support on the channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.